Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for Physician Enterprise here at Common Spirit Health. Happy New Year to everybody and welcome to the five minute check in. Today is Wednesday, January 5th. We have a lot to cover. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the Omicron variant of COVID. Second, we're going to talk about influenza A, which is starting to pick up. And number three, we have a guest, Dr. Ankita Sagar, our new Vice President for Clinical Standards who's gonna talk about screening changes for type two diabetes that we're gonna roll out here at Common Spirit. We have a lot to cover, let's get started and talk about Omicron variant. So let's talk about the Omicron variant. Obviously it's the front page news everywhere. The variant is spreading in almost every community. The world surpassed 1 million diagnoses per day, which is an outstanding number. Um, these numbers are very difficult to interpret compared to prior surges. As you can remember, in the first surge, we had very little testing available to us. So we really didn't know what the prevalence in the community was. Number two, currently, we have a lot of folks getting tested at home, and those numbers are not being counted for or registered. The most important number that we need to look at is hospitalizations. The good news coming out of South Africa is that those numbers are flat. We are seeing uptick in hospitalizations across common spirit, but we know that the ICU beds are available. On the forecasting front, experts are saying somewhere in mid-February to late February, we hope to see the surge slowly drop off. And we're all hopeful that that's going to happen. As I mentioned earlier, it appears that the Omicron variant is much less severe. A recent study, although not peer reviewed, mentioned that it appears the Omicron virus does not invade the lungs as much as does the mouth and the nose. So this might be an explanation for why it's less severe. This is just a data example and not peer reviewed or published yet. So most importantly is to look at the research that's coming out of South Africa and Scotland and England that shows that the variant is less severe. In addition to the data coming out of Africa, which actually showed that Omicron was 80% less likely than Delta to have patients get admitted to the hospital, there were two other studies, one coming out of London that demonstrated a 40% reduction in admissions when comparing Omicron to Delta, and that was looking at over 300,000 patients. And a much smaller study coming out of Scotland demonstrated a 65% reduction in admissions comparing Omicron to Delta. Now, none of these studies are peer reviewed, so we're waiting for them to be published. But the good news is that all three of them point in the same direction, that Omicron appears less severe than the Delta variant. And that's good news for all of us. So finally, in the news about Omicron, the FDA and the CDC have approved the booster shot for children between the ages of 12 and 15, and for those between the ages of five and 12 who have immunocompromised status. So that's good news for all of our children going to school, and we can encourage our parents to vaccinate their children. Last but not least, I wanna focus on influenza. About a year and a half ago, myself, along with many others, predicted that we would have a twindemic, the mixing of COVID along with influenza. That didn't happen, as you can see in this graph, mostly because people were wearing masks and safely distancing from one another. However, now we're seeing that uptick, as you can see on this graph, where across almost every community in the United States, influenza is on the rise, mostly impacting young children all the way up to the age of 25. So now is the time for us to talk to our patients and convince them to get the influenza vaccine. The time is now. So finally, we're gonna pivot away from COVID and talk about screening. It's been very difficult to focus on these things like screening during this pandemic, but we're really happy to have Dr. Ankita Sargar here, who's our new Vice President for Clinical Standards, to talk about some changes in screening for type two diabetes. So welcome, Dr. Sargar. And I know there are three big issues. Can you tell us what that first big change is about the recommendations around screening? Sure, so the first issue is that we are decreasing our age from starting screening from 40 to 35. Right, and that's in people with a BMI over, uh, I think we said 25, is that it? Correct, yes, so okay. over 25. And then the second big recommendation change, I think was in special groups. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So race, ethnicity, personal history of gestational diabetes or polycystic ovarian syndrome or family history of diabetes. So if our patients fall into these groups, then we will consider recommending screening before the age of 35 years old. So that, that group is before 35. And all the details all right. are going to be in a link for the U.S. Presentative Task Force recommendations. And finally, they mentioned treatment with metformin, which is a little unusual. So tell us about that. Correct. So they went one step further to recommend considering metformin, given its efficacy for 
preventing or delaying progression from prediabetes to diabetes in addition to lifestyle interventions. Well, great. It's good to stop and pause, talk about something other than COVID. These are new changes the U.S. Presented Task Force has laid out. So excited to have you here, Dr. Sargar. And, you know, we're going to reduce practice variation with your help. And thank you very much. So that was really great to hear from Dr. Sargar and really think about some of these new screening changes for type 2 diabetics. So thank you for joining us in the five-minute check-in. And I look forward to talking to you in about two weeks.